Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is the day Yahuwah has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in this day for Yahuwah has made us and not we ourselves. The question I'm answering today is whether the book of Revelation needs to be taught. And the reason I'm, I'm answering this question is because I'm still hearing believers say that we don't need to teach the book of Revelation. We don't need to understand it. We don't need to read it. We don't need to approach it. We don't need to deal with it. We don't need to explain it. We don't need to deal with it at all because the reason they give me is we won't even be here anyway. We're going to be raptured. Raptured. And since we're not going to be lost and we're not lost, we don't need to talk about that day. We don't need to talk about that great day. So let's see what scripture has to say about that. And I hope you're able to stay with me today and to look through the scriptures and get insight so that we can, we can talk about it right. This event being caught away, they describe it as the rapture. Let's look at what that word rapture means and see if it resembles, we're going to be caught away, rising, togetherness, wanting to be always with the master. Let's compare that with the word they use. So here's the word rapture in the 1600s, the act of carrying off as prey or plunder from rapture or else from French rapture from Latin rape, kidnapping. I don't think so. You see, there's a distinction there. A carrying off, it's not a caught away or a rising. Carrying off as in an abduction, a snatching away, a rape doesn't align with the event that we're going to be experiencing when Yahusha comes for us. We're not going to be seized, raped, kidnapped, carried off by abduction, especially raped. This is what I want to show you. Blessed. Now, I know that word has negative connotations as well, but barak, blessing, baraka. We're going to look at this word in the context of this verse. Blessed is he, barak is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it for the time is near. So if we're not supposed to be approaching the book of Revelation as believers, because as some say, we're going to be out of here and it doesn't really matter if we talk about it or not, then why did Elohim pronounce a blessing on those who read and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written, there is a blessing. So you first read it. And when you read it, you can talk about it so others can hear it, the words of this prophecy, and thereby guard, keep, hold fast to, with dear life, those things written in it. And why is that significant? Why is that important? Well, because the time is near. We still have to read it to get clarification so that we're not deceived, hear it, speak it so others can hear, and guard what's written in it. There's a message for us. When it talks about the revelation, it's talking about to unveil, to reveal something that was hidden. So now that it's revealed, the understanding through John of what the end times is all about is revealed. The cover has been removed, disclosed. What was hidden is now made known. How much more should we not be talking about it? And then we have Daniel. Daniel was told to hide the words. He was told to seal the book until the time of the end. At the time of the end, look what happens. Many shall diligently search and knowledge shall increase. So at one point, it was a secret, but now it's revealed, hence the revelation. But those who have insight into it right here, 
shall shine like the brightness of the expanse and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. It's very important. What was once sealed as a secret is now revealed. And there is a baraka to those who read, hear, and guard that information. The Most High has not asked us to keep it a secret. You and I were given the opportunity to hear it. Therefore, it's time for us to speak it so that we don't miss the opportunity. But not everyone can bless you. Yahuwah put a word in Balaam's mouth to say to Balaam, how shall I curse whom Elohim has not cursed? And how shall I defy whom Yahuwah has not defied? Only the Most High El has that authority ultimately to curse and to bless. So not everyone could bless you. Let's look at this part. And Balak said to, to Balaam, what have you done unto me? I took you to curse my enemies and behold, you have blessed them altogether. And he said, and answered and said, must I not take heed to speak that which Yahuwah has put in my mouth? So not everyone can bless you and do not accept the curse of anyone. Because El is not a man, Yahuwah is not a man, that he should lie, neither the son of Adam, that he should repent. He, has he said, and shall he not do it? He does it. He does the blessing. He does the cursing. Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. And there it is. He can't reverse his blessing. That blessing cannot be reversed. This is where the word blessing, it's in its improper context because the priests invoked, they feel by their own power alone that they can bless you and say, your sin is forgiven. But we know already that only Yahuwah can bless. But the blessing of the priests in Catholicism is not a baraka from Yahuwah. No matter how much he throws the water on you in Catholicism, that is not a baraka from Yahuwah, not at all. Do not go astray or be deceived, as Matthew says, my beloved brothers and sisters. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Not Catholicism, but their so-called blessings. It's very important that we know that the gift is from Yahuwah and not by man. I love this verse. I'll just read it because it speaks volumes. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe saying, speak unto El Aharon and unto his son saying, on this wise ye shall bless Barak, the children of Yasharon, saying unto them, Yahuwah Barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yasharal, and I will bless them. I will barak them. This is key because Yahuwah lifts his countenance upon us. Yahuwah gives us peace. Yahuwah makes his face shine upon us. He's gracious to us. And Yahuwah blesses us and guards us. Elohim is giving instruction about how to put Elohim's name on the children of Yasha. Yahuwah is saying, I want you to do it this way so that my people can have their, you could put my name on them, my name, my character, my blessing my glory upon them. And Moses was taught by Yahuwah. 
He said, speak unto Aaron and his sons. There are descendants here. So this prayer is guaranteed to be heard because it's a formula that Yahuwah created. Down here, he says, and through this blessing, this prescribed blessing, the way Yahuwah wants it, not our own way, not with our own people in our own circumstances, but if they follow this pattern, then Yahuwah promised to put his name upon the children of Yahshua. Okay, his glory, his, his identity, his, his character shall be put upon us. And he said, I will bless them. Think about it. A lot of people don't know the name. <laughs> and you probably thought I was knew I was going to say that. They don't know the name Yahuwah. They use God. And they don't identify the name of that Elohim. It could be anyone if you say God. It could be any idol, Baal. Right? It could be Krishna, it could be any name. He says, and they shall put my name on the children of Yasharam. And I will bless it. But you've got to know the name. So those who are still talking about God, this verse can't happen if you don't know the name Yahuwah. He says, I shall put my name upon the children of Yeshurel. But how can you put the name if you don't even know the name? And then when you know the name and you put the name through this prayer from Yahuwah, he says, I will bless them. I will increase them. I will multiply them. My glory will be upon them. My favor will be upon them. And that's what we want. We can't let anybody and everybody bless us. It won't come to pass. The blessing may end up being a curse. Yahuwah bless you and guard you. These are the benefits of Yahuwah's blessing. Blessing, guard you, make his face shine upon you, graciousness unto you, lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. It's a beautiful thing. So take heed that no one leads you astray. Don't let them tell you not to talk about the book of Revelation. We won't be raptured and raped. Genesis, stay with me if you can. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed and all they were away. And then the seventh day, Elohim completed his work that he did. And he rested on the seventh day from his work. And Elohim, what? You got it. Blessed. Barak. Again. This is a huge word that we found in Revelation. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart. So it's important when someone say, says to you, it's the seventh day is not that important. We don't have to set it apart. Well, guess what? That's the same principle as they're, that they're using in the book of Revelation. We don't have to talk about Revelation. We don't have to talk about it, read it, explain it. It's too complicated. We don't have to dig deep because we're going to be gone. That's not scripture. It's the same thing here. We don't have to guard the seventh day. We don't have to keep it. The seventh day is every day of the week. It says the seventh day in creation. He blessed the day. This It's blessed. Do you want to be blessed? If you want to be blessed, you have to... Bless what Yahuwah blessed. You can't be antagonistic. You have to bless what Yahuwah blessed. If he blessed the seventh day, you bless the seventh day, right? If you're blessed, if you read and hear and guard Revelation, the, the prophecy of the book, if you do it and he says to do it, then you're blessed. Do you want, the question becomes, do you want the Barak, the blessing the Barakah of Yahuwah. That's the bottom line. If you don't want it, yeah, well then, 
go about doing what we usually do. But if you want to be blessed, guard the seventh day. Set it apart for all those reasons, because we love him. We guard his commands. It's very simple. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor. There's the instruction and she'll do your work. That's the instruction. In six days, you have a lot of time. <laughs> we have a lot of time. But in the seventh day is Shabbat, Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male said, don't put anyone to work. Your female servant, your cattle, your stranger who is in your house. Six days, the heavens and earth were made, the sea and all that is in them. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, here we go, everyone. Yahuwah, what? Blessed. There's that word again. He's blessed it. Do you not want to be blessed? I, I need to be blessed. I need lots of it. So I'm going to set it apart. So if you still raise your children, believer or not, to respect you, to respect the mother, the father, and you teach them, do it because we want you to have long life. If you believe in the respecting father, you must believe in setting the seventh day apart. Because it's one and the same scripture. Guard the seventh day. I like to say this. When you were sleeping, when did you work? You didn't. You didn't work. You were resting. So it can't be about works. Logic. Sometimes blessings don't look like blessings. Let's look at Revelation has on 14. Here is the endurance of the set-apart ones. Here are those guarding the commands of Elohim. I'm going to underline that now. We just talked about the commands and not leaving one out because you feel like it, because you won't be blessed leaving it out. That's just it. I didn't say it. And the scripture said it. And the belief of Yahusha. So endurance for those who say we're not going to be here anyway. We just go smooth out and leave the other people to suffer. We don't talk about it. We don't teach them. We don't help them to understand the book. We don't guard the prophecies. And we don't guard the commands. But those who endure to the end and are saved, the set-apart ones, they guard the commands, including the seventh day Sabbath. They hold fast to it for their life. There's going to be the character of Yahuwah in us that's going to be different than the character of the world. And they're going to be able to find you because how? You're not taking the mark. Why? Because you're guarding the commands. This is the commands in the book of Revelation. Those who think that the commands... And the blessings of them, we're still on the word blessed, scenes, Barak. Those who think it's only an exodus, as exodus and it's done away with in Shemot, it's done away with. Well, here we have it in Revelation. Those who endure are the set apart ones that guard the commands and the, and the belief of Yahusha. They hold fast to the commands and they hold fast to their belief in Yahusha. Look at this. And I heard a voice out of heaven, the Shemaim saying to me, Right. Here's what they're going to write now, John. Blessed. <laughs> I made a bit of a mess on my screen. Blessed are the dead who die in the master from now on. And this is what I was saying. This word blessed, when you're in Mashiach, this word blessed is for life and death into eternity. That's why we are to endure because we are blessed even what? When we're dead. What? How can you be blessed when you're dead? Pray tell. Because we are, we have died in the master Yahusha. Yeah. It all begins with Yahuwah. 
before the foundation of the world into eternity. Your blessing, my blessing, your baraka, my baraka, even in death, which looks so bad to the world, how can they be blessed when they're being persecuted for righteousness, when they're being killed and they die in the master? They don't just die, everyone. They die in the master. That brings joy to me. Because when we see the world changing, my window is over there, so I'm looking outside the world. When the world changes as we see it, we may have to die in the master. And that will take endurance. So that piece about we don't need to read Revelation because we're not going to be around to suffer anything. That's not what the scripture says. Some will be put to death because of their guarding the commands and believing in Yahusha. Not just believing in Yahusha, but also guarding his commands. And his commands are not grievous, by the way. They're quite beautiful, and they protect us from wickedness. Yes, says the Ruach, the spirit. They die in the master in order that they rest. I made a mess here and my drawing, in order that they rest from their labor. So what do you mean labor? I thought there was no works. <laughs> well, we got to work while it is day. We have to endure. Endurance is work. Endure right, though. Not just, you know, your own strength, but in the belief of Yahusha, guarding his command, we are still called blessed are the dead, even unto death. In the master, says the Ruach, in order that they rest. And the opposite, those who take the mark or do not guard commands or the belief of Yahusha, they have no rest day or night. That's in the same scripture, Revelation 14. This scripture from the book of Revelation would be lost if we never talked about it. So if you say we don't need to talk about it, then how would we... Help people endure in the end. Those who are alive to really endure unto death. That's tribulation. And it is recognized by Yahuwah as worthy of eternal life. Barak Yahuwah, oh my soul. And don't forget. <laughs> don't forget what? His benefits. There's benefits in his blessing. There's benefits in guarding the Sabbath day, the seventh day. There's blessings in reading, hearing, and guarding the book of the prophecy of Revelation. There's benefits of worshiping and blessing Yahuwah and walking a set-apart life. Don't forget. Don't leave out any Barak out of your life. So if you're thinking, I don't have to teach Revelation, I don't have to do it because I'm out of here. You're losing your blessing. But just don't forget Yahuwah. Don't forget all his. Remember it comes from Yahuwah. All good gifts. Perfect comes from above. Who forgives all your iniquities? We need his forgiveness. We need his healing of our diseases. Look at that benefit. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouth with good things. So that, and I'm not talking about pizza here. I'm talking about wisdom. Not pizza. <laughs> wisdom. Wisdom to know how to walk. Wisdom to understand, recognize what's good because our world is upside down. We can't determine what's good, what's evil. But he satisfies us with good things. His commands are good things. It's beautiful. Covet in a good way the commands because it's his character and he satisfies us when we walk in him. And he renews our youth like the eagles. Everybody wants renewed youth like the eagles inside and out. Yahuwah executes righteousness, good, right rulings, and for all that are oppressed. Oh, so 
we're going to be oppressed and still be blessed? Yes, sometimes we will be oppressed. But don't turn to the wrong people. Turn to Yahuwah. Bless Yahuwah, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Barak, his name. That was a long teaching. But guess what? I hope you go back and, and watch it again and, and learn from it and forgive my long-windedness. I'm never that long. You guys know it. Y'all know it. I'm never that long. But I just wanted to really reinforce that revelation is a blessing to those who believe. Those who believe. So read it. Hear it. Well, you read it so you could talk about it so someone could hear it and guard it. And bless Yahuwah, for he is worthy. Thank you for listening. Shalom, everyone. When Yahusha stands up, everything.